Okay, you're looking at my next project. <laughs> so it's a it's a game called Crokinole. It's a 26 inch diameter playing surface with uh, concentric rings. Uh, the the first one being one inch, and then from there four inches in, and from there another four inches in, and then you have a center hole. That's inch and three eighths diameter, quarter inch deep. Now the discs are. Uh, this game was originally um, designed in the 1870s, I believe, in uh, in in Canada, and um, so it's it it's it. The dimensions are in metric, and the center hole. Uh, was originally 35 millimeters but I'm gonna make that inch and three-eighths and then the discs were 32 millimeters by 10 millimeters I'm gonna make those inch and a quarter by 0.39 inches so I'm gonna try and keep the thickness about the same I'm gonna make mine out of this piece of red oak dowel that I have that's inch and a quarter nice and round I'll just slice off um, you need 24 game pieces, two different colors. So while I'm waiting for my uh, stuff to arrive from McMaster Car, I've got some T-nuts coming and there's some different ways I'm going to construct this board so that it's uh, a little more friendly to waxing and um, basically putting it together. So I'm going to use my shaper to do this work and then I've got to figure out a way to get these consistently uh, the same cut and uh, get a get a nice smith, a nice finish on these as well. So, okay, so here's my inch and a quarter dowel. I drilled a test hole in this piece of maple that's an old uh, drill table insert. And when I put that in there, it is really snug. So what happens is, as I spin it, it burnishes that end, which is a good thing. So I, um, I'm going to try and use that to my advantage. All right, I spun a 5 16 inch stud. As far, first, I used the bolt to uh, use it as, as a tap. Then I had this stud laying around. I spun that in as far as it would go. Now when I chuck my drill up to it, I'll chuck it right up tight to this stud. That'll prevent it from uh, uh, spinning, I hope. The All right, let's try this again. Nice. Nice and warm. <laughs> that looks really nice. Nice and polished. I'm going to do that a little bit longer here. Now it's still a pretty snug fit in here so I think I might take my dowel and run it in here a couple of times. Or not a couple of times, maybe just a few revolutions to burnish this as well and just open it up just a hair. Alright, that looks really good. I like the feel of this. This I'll slice off in the end anyway. Uh, my 2 by I ended up drilling a through hole. And then I'll, I'll put this up against the fence after I get my distance set. Uh, this edge was face jointed and then this one squared up to it. So it's going to ride against my fence this way. And then I'll use this as my registering uh, face to get my disc.
10.2 to 10.19. I'll take that. All right, let's just keep rolling here. Got to make sure that I've got that pushed all the way back. That does work out pretty well to uh, just push the disc out with the incoming dowel. I want to attempt to put just a slight uh, chamfer on these or, or a little bit of a round over. But you can see I don't have the, the uh, small insert for my um, router plate. And that's just too dangerous for me right there that that could tip in. So I found an old piece of plexiglass that I had from my uh, Porta Cable router. I was thinking about using this hole, but that's the same diameter. But this hole here is perfect. I mean, it's just a little bit larger. So what I'm doing is I've got a quarter inch bolt in my uh, INCRA T-Track here that I used to slide that back and forth. Uh, drill this out just a little bit. This hole here I had to drill it out just a hair uh, so that it would fit this quarter inch bolt. And then I put some double stick tape down here. And that's going to hold my plate, my plexiglass plate, and keep it from sliding around. It's also going to hold it um, tight to this so that I keep a consistent uh, result. We'll get these that off of there, okay. Get it relatively centered up here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just so the bit spins freely in that hole. Right there. And that some good pressure down. And then I'm going to lock it in the back here with this bolt so that I've got a positive lock as well. pretty good. So I had uh, this one inch bushing, bronze bushing in my drawer and then inside of that fit this other bushing. So one inch OD three quarter ID and then that one drops right in. I put a piece of sandpaper on top of it. That holds my disc in place. Use my magic finger here. I put a little 3 in 1 oil in there as well, and provide a little lubrication, and then I can spin it and put a light sand on this routed edge. Flip it. helps if you get in the middle. And that's it. I mean that really puts a finishing edge on that uh, round over. So got a few more of these to do but this is really making it easy and fast compared to just holding it in your hand and
trying to do it one at a time on each side to 